Welcome to my PCANView 5 video about transmitting CAN and CAN FD messages. I have established a connection from my computer to the CAN FD bus using a PCAN USB FD. For working with CAN FD messages, of course a CAN FD interface is required. But for the basic functions shown in this video, it doesn't matter whether you're using a CAN or a CAN FD interface. The receive transmit window is open and lists the incoming CAN messages. In order to transmit CAN messages, they must be added to the transmit panel. For this, do a right click on the panel and select new message. With the dialog new transmit message, we can configure our message and start with the ID. The CAN ID is entered in hexadecimal format and is by default a standard frame 11 bit ID. If I cross the limit for 11-bit IDs, the checkbox, Extended Frame, is activated and the ID becomes a 29-bit value. Please note, if I enter something below the limit, the checkbox is not deactivated automatically, since this is a valid 29-bit CAN ID and not equal to the 11-bit version. Now, we can go on with the payload of the CAN message. A conventional CAN message can have 0 to 8 data bytes which is set with the length. Then you can enter the data again in hex. For now, we keep the cycle time at 0 and close this dialog with OK. Our new CAN message is now in the transmit panel list. We can trigger its transmission manually by selecting the message and pressing the space bar. The count increases. If we want to transmit the message periodically, we must enter a cycle time greater than zero. I do a right click on the message and select Edit Message. I enter 1000 here, which is a second, and confirm my changes with OK. The message is now transmitted every second. The repeated transmission of the new CAN message is indicated here. If I select the message and hit the space bar, the message is transmitted in addition. Next, I would like to create a CAN FD message, which of course requires using a CAN FD interface. I open the dialog and enter my CAN ID just like before. But now, I activate this CAN FD checkbox. With CAN FD, the data length can be set up to 64 bytes. In that case, we need an additional dialog for entering the data. Click this button. Besides entering the data in hex, I can use this column to enter it in ASCII. For example, peak system. I set the cycle time to 100 milliseconds and confirm with OK. The message is listed in the transmit panel with a little FD symbol in the column type. And the 64 data bytes. But, the 64 bytes of my new message are not transmitted with the higher data bit rate, which is a feature of the CAN FD protocol. I open the dialog again with Edit Message. For this, I have to activate the bit rate switch with this checkbox. And confirm with OK. Now the message has an additional BRS icon in the column type, indicating that the data bytes are transmitted with the data bit rate. By the way, I can pause the periodical transmission by deactivating this checkbox. If I select all messages, I can pause and resume the message transmission with the menu command pause or by pressing the key, pause. Sometimes it is practical to have the same CAN message with different data byte setups. For this, the copy and paste functions are handy. Just do this and edit the message data afterwards. This is how messages are created and transmitted. If you click the Save button in this view, the transmit list is saved to a file. The menu command, Clear All, deletes all messages. Thanks for watching.